This video shows how to perform random effects estimation on eViews. I also provide some helpful interpretations of the results and show how they differ from those of fixed effects model. Alright, so I'm going to show you the data set right here on Excel. I have 10 firms color coded right all the way down here. And as you can see, data is from 2001 to 2020. So let's go ahead to eViews and import the file. So open foreign data and let's look up the file right here. I see it. Open. And next, next, actually you can just click finish and no. And here we go. So right here at the top panel, it says we have 10 firms with annual data from 2001 to 2020, yielding, uh, yielding two, 200 observations. This is a regression of uh, market capitalization against capital expenditure and book value of equity. So I'm gonna, we're going to click on the variables beginning with the, the dependent variable. So hold down the control key and then click on the regressors in the order that you want them. So capex and book value of equity. And right click on any of them and open as equation right there. And um, so we're going to go to panel options for cross sections, change this to fixed to run the fixed effects model. And although it's not necessary to run fixed effects prior to running random effects, it's helpful though to do so, especially if you plan to compare results of the two models afterward. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK, and that's the result we obtained some time ago. Dependent variable is market capitalization. We find that this regression is statistically significant at any conventional level and about 96% of the variation in market capitalization is explained by this regression on capital expenditure and book value of equity. And importantly, we find that CapEx has a positive impact on market capitalization, while book value of equity has a negative impact, probably because of the widely documented negative signaling effect that comes from the issue of new common equity. But anyhow, for good measure, both are statistically significant. To run random effects, we're going to go to Estimate, and here for Panel Options, change cross-section to Random. And if you want, you can also change Period to Random. Now this allows the random error component to take into account variation over time, resulting in a two-way random effects model. But we're not doing that this time, so kick it right back to from whence it came. All right, so that's all we want, and OK. And that's our outputs, our beautiful output. And as mentioned earlier, the regression is statistically significant. Notice, importantly, that both coefficients uh, in terms of science and statistical significance are consistent with those of fixed effects results. The average intercept term right here is 786.9. Incidentally, this output doesn't include the differential intercept values of the 10 firms. If it did, we would have been able to determine the specific intercept value for each of the 10 firms. For example, if this uh, if differential intercept for a particular firm is 100, then this intercept value for that firm would have been 100 added to 786 which would give us 886.9 and if it were a negative 100 then it would have been 786.9 minus 100 to give us an intercept value of uh, of 686.9 so what is unknown though at this point is which estimator fixed effects or random effects is more appropriate to determine this we would need to perform husband tests under the null hypothesis that the two estimators are the same. And if we reject that hypothesis, we would go for fixed effects, as I'll explain in the next and final video in the series. In the meantime, we can also examine the value of the GLS parameter lambda, and we estimate lambda using variance estimates of the cross-section random error term omega, as well as the idiosyncratic error term as I showed you in the preceding video. Now, right on this output, the estimated standard deviations of the two are provided here, as you can see. So all 
we have to do is square them to get the variance estimates and then calculate lambda as I show right here on my PowerPoint. Right? First off, remember that lambda ranges from 0 to 1, 0 and 1 included. If lambda is 1, then the uh, random effects estimator defaults to fixed effects model. As you can see right here, if lambda is 1, then this is going to leave us with uh, the within group fixed effects model. And to estimate lambda using the values provided in the uh, output we just saw, we find it to be 0.97, which you can see is pretty darn close to lambda of 1, telling us that perhaps fixed effects model might well be the way to go. Well, one final thing before we check out of here is the issue with time invariant variables, which are those uh, variables uh, whose values do not change across time. For, for example, gender, race, educational level, ID, and stuff like that. So to understand how it is, the random effects model does a much better job, in fact, does a good job in dealing with such variables. Let's consider the model again. And this time, let's throw in a, a, a time invariant variable L. And since L is time invariant, it means that each value is equal to the mean of it. So for fixed effects model where lambda is 1, you can see that the difference right here is going to be 0. In other words, it wouldn't count in a fixed effects model. However, for a random effects model where lambda is some value between 0 and 1, then this is not going to be 0. For example, if L is 10 and lambda is 0 0.8, 0 0.8 times the mean of 10 leaves us with 8, and 10 minus 8 is 2. And so, as you can see, the impact of L, this uh, time invariant vehicle, would definitely be registered in this model. And so, to conclude, unlike fixed effects model where the effect of a time invariant uh, variable is lost, it is accounted for in random effects model just like the other regressors in the model. The one key drawback though in random effects modeling is the assumption that the covariance between the cross-section random error term omega and the regressors is zero, which in many cases may not hold. And that's it.